Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CLEAR meeting on the future of European excellence in AI. It's wonderful to see so many of you here, um, although, of course, uh, this is not really the same thing as being in the same room. And I'm very sorry that uh, we have to do it this way. There are some advantages too, in that I suspect that a few more people will be able to join us and maybe a few different people will be able to join us uh, given that we uh, hold this event uh, in a virtual way. Nevertheless, I really do hope that uh, in the very near future, we'll be able to physically get together again, because as we have experienced, um, at past uh, CLEAR events, uh, there is a special atmosphere, a special energy uh, that arises uh, when we do get together uh, uh, and start talking and working and, uh, and push towards our ambitious uh, and, uh, and uh, shared vision. Now, um, within the next one and a half hours, um, we want to basically give you an update, an opportunity to also ask us questions um, and we do want to create an atmosphere in which, as best as we can under these circumstances, leverage um, your collective wisdom uh, to guide us uh, for some of the next steps. Before we go there, uh, first of all, let's recall what CLAIR is all about. CLAIR is about excellence across all of AI for all of Europe with benefits to the rest of the world with a human-centered focus. You all remember that. As of last year, Claire has also strongly um, embraced a dual focus on AI for good, notably AI for helping us all to meet the United Nations, um, uh, the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals and AI for all, AI that benefits everyone across our society. The clear vision of how to reach these goals has three components, as you might recall, a European network of AI research groups and centers. Uh, and I'm happy to report that last, uh, since last time you might have gotten an update on this, this has grown further. We're now at 381 uh, research groups and institutes uh, with over 21,000 researchers and support staff working uh, at these nodes. Uh, and they're actually located in 35 countries which of course do not only include uh, EU countries, but also uh, closely affiliated countries such as Switzerland, Norway, the UK, and a few others. Furthermore, we believe that regional excellence centers need to be created um, where top researchers, staff, and infrastructure come together uh, to work focused on specific aspects of AI and its applications. Uh, regional excellence centers that become uh, regional focus points of AI activity. And thirdly, from the very beginning, we've been advocating for the creation of something truly special and truly outstanding, namely a European AI hub, uh, something that the European Commission, who has since embraced this idea, calls a lighthouse center for AI. This is supposed to be a focal point for exchange and interaction for Europe and the world, uh, that provides world-leading infrastructure and support to top AI researchers and talent that becomes a global attractor for AI talent and a symbol for European excellence and ambition in AI. Very much like ESA is, a, is such a symbol in the area of space um, and uh, CERN is a, is a symbol like that uh, in the area of particle physics. Our agenda for today is as follows. We'll spend the next 20 minutes or so um, on a brief status update. Uh, this won't be comprehensive, um, but we want to highlight a few things that you might have seen uh, in the uh, messages that we sent out uh, about a couple of months ago. Um, then we want to leave plenty of room for questions and answers. And um, this is where you, know, you can ask us questions uh, or make remarks. Um, on what you've heard or any other aspect uh, that you're curious about in terms of CLEAR. Uh, we will then spend about 15 minutes uh, on a new and exciting topic, namely supporting research in and through CLEAR. Uh, and finally, uh, we'll have a little working session. We'll see how that goes uh, through uh, in this format uh, about realizing the CLEAR vision. So as for the status update, um, it's my pleasure to welcome Hector Geffner uh, who is, of course, not only a very prominent AI researcher in Europe, um, but also has played leadership roles in your AI. 
um, and has been uh, from the very beginning a key supporter of Clear. And Hector will tell us a little bit uh, about Clear and URI because after all, this is formally part of ECHI um, and there is indeed um, a very close connection uh, between Clear and URI as Hector will explain. Okay, so I've, I've been asked uh, to speak for a couple of minutes about the relation between uh, uh, European A Association and Claire as uh, an outgoing uh, member of the of the board of ERI. Uh, uh, so a couple of remarks only. So as you know, the European Association is um, an association of associations. Okay, Claire on the other hand is like a network of, of researchers in Europe. Uh, um, there are some concerns have been raised about potential overlap, potential conflicts, okay? Uh, in my view, I don't see um, any of that. Actually, I tend to think that there's a lot of room for synergies, okay? And, and for, uh, reinforcing the, for reinforcing the role of European AI research, okay, at the European level, okay, politically as, as well. So we started with some uh, meetings and collaboration. I was in one of these meetings in, in the spring, actually, right before or actually when this pandemic started. Uh, and um, uh, at that meeting, actually, what I said is one of the things is basically we are the same people, okay? So we are the same people that we often change hats, okay? Sometimes we are in one journal, sometimes in another journal, sometimes in one association. And I see that uh, here as well, in this case, actually, we are the same people. And with the new election, the members of the board, we actually, that's literal, okay? So Holger and Frederick, okay, are now part of the, of the board. I think that's uh, good news, okay, for strengthening this uh, collaboration and have a stronger presence, okay, um, in support of the European AI science at the European uh, level. Okay, um, uh, once again, I, um, I think that uh, I don't see uh, any potential conflict. I'll be happy to hear and to address any uh, specific concerns. And on the personal level, I think it's very good to have people that have the ambitions, the push, the will, okay, to, to go. So in a sense, we have had uh, for many years play a relatively shy role at the European level, okay, uh, in a very personal level. So I'm not speaking either on behalf of Claire or on behalf of the European AI. On a personal level, I tend to think that for a couple of decades, actually, since I moved to Europe, the funding for AI in Europe has been pretty bad. Actually, I would call it almost a disaster. And I think that one of the reasons is that we didn't have a good voice, okay? So the, the Excellence European scientists okay doing AI didn't have a voice. So I hope that this is, is, is this has to change. Okay, putting money in AI is not enough. Playing catch up with the uh, American AI science, okay, and, and, and China is not enough. We have to distribute resources in a way that we want to be able to compete, okay, at the scientific level with what's done in other places. Okay, so as uh, uh, plenty of opportunities for synergy, and I hope that uh, Holger and, and Frederick will push for this, okay, uh, now that they are part of the board. Okay, that's all what I have to say. Thank you, Holger. Thank you very much, Hector, and also for the encouragement. Uh, I think you can rest assured that uh, Frederick and I will try and bring the spirit that we, uh, that we helped create and clear also uh, into your AI, where I think a lot of it already exists and has actually existed for the last few years. Uh, under the leadership of Barry and others. So indeed, I think uh, this should be relatively easy and smooth sailing uh, for the benefit of uh, our joint community. Thanks again, Hector. The second point I want to briefly address myself um, is uh, ICT48 and beyond. Uh, some of you will have been uh, just a little while ago uh, at the opening of the Taylor workshop uh, that is happening today and tomorrow. Uh, Taylor, of course, is one of uh, four new networks of centers of excellence. What Hector said uh, about AI funding in Europe um, is, is true. I, I agree with that. But as of late, I think we see some encouraging signs. And ICT48 was one such, you know, spring flower, I would call it. Uh, it's not uh, the full-on summer yet, but uh, it's, it's a good sign. Um, Claire, as many of you might know, um, has been majorly and is majorly involved uh, 
in, uh, in several uh, of the proposals and three of, of those uh, four that have been selected ultimately uh, uh, were actually uh, uh, with major, major involvement from CLEAR. And these are Taylor, Human AI, Net, uh, and AI for Media. Uh, each have been awarded 12 million euros uh, for uh, to be spent over three years. Now that sounds like um, a lot of money, but if you recall how big the research network is, and in fact um, these networks here don't even cover our entire research network, unfortunately, uh, that, that actually isn't a whole lot of money, but uh, it's good seed funding. We also managed, which I'm personally very pleased about, um, to be awarded the coordination and support mandate, which is called Vision, that's even less money, but I think it's strategically very important um, because its role is to ensure that Europe does not end up with four largely separate, weakly connected networks, uh, but that indeed there is some synergy rather than more fragmentation. Um, we see the success in ICT48, which many of you have worked very hard for, um, as seed funding for parts of the CLEAR Research Network. Um, I also want to emphasize that uh, we've uh, consciously built in mechanisms for connectivity and outreach beyond the consortia of these networks uh, and also uh, created mechanisms for, for effective engagement with industry, which we think is very important. Having said that, ICT48 can just be the beginning. Um, and you know, it's, it's sad that, uh, that parts of the European research community in AI um, have been kind of left out of this. Uh, I think that's a consequence of the way that the funding mechanism had been designed, um, but uh, we're working hard to try and uh, rectify this uh, through future um, calls. There is an ICT49 proposal under review that tries to draw in a few more partners, uh, and that has a slightly different goal um, as per the ICT49 call, uh, namely to enable broad and effective use of the AI on demand platform to essentially help that the AI on demand platform uh, becomes the smashing success that it that it deserves to be and that the European Commission uh, wants it to be. So again, that is sort of a strongly clear, coordinated and led proposal. Uh, actually, uh, the pen has been held in this case uh, by DFKI, uh, one of our members of the first hour. Um, and uh, of course, we hope that, that this will be awarded, but uh, it, it's gonna take a little while until we know. Um, there will be more to come for broader segments of the CLEAR community. Uh, if anybody is interested in helping us work towards that, um, I mean, of course, this is nothing that the CLEAR leadership does by itself, um, but that uh, is sort of a bigger effort. So, so do make sure that we know if you want to work on something like this. Um, I would now like to invite Friedrich Heinz, uh, who's not only the coordinator of the Taylor network that I just mentioned, uh, but also a member of the CLEAR extended core team, and as we've just heard, uh, a new member of the URAI board, uh, to talk a little bit about another very important activity um, that uh, we've been going through over the last uh, half year and a bit. Friedrich, please. Thank you very much, Holger. Uh, so, uh, one of the roles that I've had on the CLEAR extended core team is that I am, together with Jerome van der Hoven, have been uh, in charge of uh, leading the task force on uh, the response to the European Commission white paper. So as you probably know, uh, the Commission released this white paper in February this year and asked the community for uh, inputs on, on the um, white paper. And of course, this is one of the major mechanisms for us as a community to uh, provide input and to um, contribute uh, to make sure that uh, the opinions from the community which we represent uh, gets um, gets its due attention. Uh, so uh, in the working group the, the process was basically that we uh, drafted an initial response, sent out this initial response to the CLEAR community. We received a lot of constructive and valuable feedback which we then incorporated into the response. Uh, so in the response, uh, we had 10 key recommendations. Uh, I will not have time to go through all of them here, but I, I think some of them are important to, to lift up. And that, uh, so the first one here is the really that we need to make sure that we complement this push for AI regulation with swift and substantial investment into AI research. And this is, of course, there's a lot of talk about the regul regulatory aspects, but we also have to make sure that we have the, the science in order to uh, realize this uh, regulation. So in some sense, we cannot lead in regulation if we cannot lead in the, the scientific part. So 
uh, in order for Europe to take uh, a lead in this area, we really need to be a leader in, in AI research as well. And uh, related to that, we also need to, to focus this on streamlining and uh, make it easier for us as researchers to, to do the work in order to support these uh, long-term goals. Uh, and as Holger in, um, mentioned in his introduction, we really think it's important that AI made in Europe should be AI for good and AI for all. Uh, and, and the fifth and, and final one recommendation on this particular slide is this, that we need to make sure that we have a strategy for coordinating and structuring the AI-based innovation ecosystem. So, so one of the, the comments we had was that the, the, the view on innovation was relatively uh, old fashioned and that there is a need to, to leverage and to support the kind of uh, new types of companies that uh, come and very quickly make a major impact and to support the broad AI ecosystem, sorry, innovation ecosystem. Next slide, please. Um, and of course, collect, connected to this, it's also about uh, increasing the uptake and investment uh, in broader awareness. So, I mean, I, I strongly believe that in order to have this both AI for good and AI for all, we really need to uh, raise the awareness in the general population and to support uh, this kind of multi-stakeholder involvement. Uh, and uh, finally, but of course not least, is that we, we, we really think this is very important to create this proposed lighthouse center, uh, uh, as it was described in the uh, white <clears throat> paper, uh, because it, we really need this critical mass and uh, to achieve this synergy and cohesion across this European ecosystem. And this lighthouse is one major component uh, in that. So next slide, please. Uh, so after the responses have been collected, and I, uh, I think it was in the order of 1200 or something, like that, a large number of responses were received. And we have seen a, a first the initial summary of these responses basically on the numerical values. Uh, and what we can see is that uh, a very large majority uh, uh, of the respondents support the existing networks of research and innovation. We also see that uh, almost two thirds of all the respondents are uh, positive or very positive, or sorry, uh, thinks this uh, Lighthouse Research Center is either important or very important, uh, which is of course a, a strong argument uh, for the case that we have been, been building. And also that there is a strong support for this public-private partnership that we see developing. So overall, I think this has been an important process for the CLEAR community to be able to uh, provide uh, substantial input. And it seems like the, the recommendations and, and feedback that we have been given uh, is well received within the general AI community. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Frederick. And if I might just add one observation, I mean, of course, you know, this enormous uh, number of uh, of uh, input, uh, of pieces of input that the Commission received is doubtlessly thanks to many of you uh, who followed our encouragement uh, to actually contribute. And, and as you can see, that can make a difference. Now, I happen to believe that the 64% of respondents in favor of the Lighthouse is not just the people here. Uh, I don't think we have quite that many. Um, but uh, I'm amazed actually, because you know, PPPs, um, which uh, is, they're, they're a mechanism, and, and we'll hear more about that, that's very established at the European level, and there's large lobbying groups behind that, right? The Lighthouse is a radical and new idea, and, and we had reasons to believe that, that it might be a bit of a controversial idea. The fact that without any major lobbying efforts, except for our own, 64% of respondents were in favor of that, in my opinion, is absolutely outstanding. So uh, with that, I want to give the floor to Morten Irgens, uh, who is a member of the CLEAR core team and in charge of uh, one of the most time and labor intensive initiatives that we've recently been involved in. Please, Morten. Well, thank you. Um, this is about uh, the European partnership in AI, data and robotics, as, as you can see on the slide to the right. Uh, it's a partnership between uh, uh, Clear and uh, our uh, our our AI brothers uh, and sisters in your AI and Ellis, and uh, and uh, the Big Data Value Association and e Robotics, that which are two existing uh, public-private partnerships in the Commission's program for that during uh, Horizon 2020. Um, so. Um, 
we are together setting up what is called a co-program partnership in AI, AI, data and robotics. And uh, it goes under many names, European partnership, public private partnerships, PPP, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, let me, yeah. So it's an instrument uh, under the commission with certain clear objectives. Number one, to mobilize and coordinate public and private stakeholders in AI data and robotics. Uh, but also to mobilize and coordinate both public and private investment in AI data and robotics in order to get particularly European industry to, to invest in the long-term developments we need to see. And of course, uh, we need to produce strategic agendas for AI data and robotics in Europe. Um, and it's a good thing that these agendas are being developed in a collaboration with, uh, with the communities across Europe. Our timeline is the following. This fall, we need to finish our strategic agenda. Uh, very soon, in, and uh, early next year, we will have a contract, probably, maybe around the, the, the change of the year, contract with the Commission. Uh, and the duration of the, this partnership will be the entire Horizon Europe period. Now, um, why? is Claire engaged in this. Remember, this is a vehicle that is uh, much closer to the industry side, and it is a vehicle to mobilize industry and startups and, 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 and everybody else in the commercial sector. Well, it is a very important a key element in the Commission's AI strategy. And since it's a key element, we believe that we need to be there. Furthermore, it is a vehicle for Claire to influence. Of course, it's a vehicle for Claire to implement parts of Claire's vision and agenda. And we really believe that Europe's AI research can only benefit from stronger, better commercial European AI as well. So that collaboration across, across uh, sectors is needed for Europe to, to, uh, to develop its AI activities. Now, you can influence its direction. You still have some hours. We have, uh, uh, first of all, previously, Claire has written 10 recommendations for, our, for such a partnership, and you can read it. Uh, you can find it at, uh, um, for instance, at uh, Claire's uh, website. We have a questionnaire out, uh, which we will be available until midnight tonight. Uh, no, I think actually until midnight on Sunday, so you had a weekend to fill it out and give the partnership input to the development of our strategic agenda. Please do so, this is important. Uh, let your voice be heard. Reflect on what Europe needs to do in order to move ahead uh, globally in AI. You can find more information on Twitter, on Vision Claire, and our, on our website, of course. Thank you very much. And just in case anybody is wondering, we will be posting these slides on our website uh, as soon as possible after this presentation, so you can uh, revisit material. Uh, I'd just like to add one thought to what Morten said. Um, you know, here in Germany, um, our Chancellor, uh, Angela Merkel, uh, has said at the beginning of the pandemic uh, something that, that really etched itself into people's minds. She said, this is serious, please take it serious. Now, this isn't as serious as the pandemic, of course, right? But, but in terms of European AI, this PPP is serious. So please take it seriously as well and do take the 15, 20 minutes uh, that are needed to fill out this survey. I can guarantee you that this will have an effect just like the responses to the white paper consultation did have an effect. And in particular, as you do so, um, make sure that you notice at the very end there is a box for all sorts of other comments. If you feel that Claire's 10 recommendations for a Coke program European Partnership in AI are indeed useful or whatever subset you find uh, really yourself strongly in agreement with, do copy them in there. Ask the people who are uh, evaluating this um, to take another look uh, and to take this seriously as well. 
So uh, a very brief item, but I think it's, it's actually quite exciting, is our new collaboration with AI Hub. AI Hub is the Association for the Understanding of Artificial Intelligence. It's been uh, founded by former AAAI president uh, Thomas Dieterich and, and a few others. Uh, Sabine Howard actually has played, uh, is playing a major role in that as well. Um, it is a nonprofit organization with the mission to connect uh, the AI community to the, to the public by providing free, high-quality information and AI research and innovation. You can imagine how important that is, right? Because so much hype is being spread by all sorts of outlets and actors, not all of whom actually have the knowledge to competently speak about AI, not all of them have the motivation um, to really uh, tell the general public what AI is about, can be about, and should be about. So we decided to join AI Hub, and indeed we're in very good company. Um, there are six leading global scientific organizations in AI that are trustees, uh, the Triple AI, AIJ and Ichkai, the ACM Special Interest Group on AI, uh, IMS, IMLS, NURPS, Robocop, and now also um, CLEAR. So I think that's absolutely wonderful. Um, and to make it even more wonderful, um, actually we have injected a new focus um, into, uh, into AI Hub, and that is the focus on AI for good and AI for all. And AI Hub and us are very happy to sort of share this commitment um, to bring information to the public on how AI can and should be used for good and for all, and uh, to highlight research. Uh, that does that. So if in the future you have research that you would want to reach the general public, uh, this is a mechanism um, that we are opening for you to use. Of course, you could have done this by yourself as well by just contacting AI Hub, but by us having a stake in AI Hub, uh, we will make it uh, more streamlined and more effective yet. With this, I'd like to pass uh, the, the baton to uh, Philip Zuzalek, uh, core team member of CLEAR. Uh, to talk a little bit about another very exciting and potentially hugely impactful development that we have in CLEAR. Philip, please. Yes, thanks, Holger. And hello to everyone. Um, yes, uh, we have been, in CLEAR, we've been working a lot uh, on the collaboration with industry by establishing uh, a task force addressing this. Ta task forces are, are mechanisms where we build small teams within CLEAR that drive forward certain aspects of our work. Um, it's actually one of the first task forces we established earlier this year. And the motivation is really uh, the point that CLEAR, to reach our goals, we need the close collaboration uh, with industry. And we've already heard about the PPP, which is a fairly high level, I would argue, uh, initiative uh, at the EU level uh, with the commission. Uh, there's a lot more that we can do uh, hands-on in the direct collaboration between academia um, and industry, but also involving entrepreneurs, uh, also maybe investors and, and governments also uh, active in this area. The idea is to, uh, to complement our existing research network, which is limited to nonprofit research organization with what we call an innovation network. Um, and to create the necessary structures and services for the network. I mean, industry, uh, right, is not just interested in general nice papers or long-term visions, but they have very concrete needs. Uh, they're very interested in hiring good talent, um, um, but they are also willing to fund research in areas where it benefits them. And uh, in order to make that work, this is what we're trying to do with this uh, initiative. It's important to note that while all of the research network is for free, we envision, uh, no, we, we plan for the innovation network uh, for the industry to actually pay for that. And that is, uh, this, this uh, money will be used for actually running this uh, industry network but hopefully there will be enough money to also fund um, other activities uh, in CLEAR from that. Uh, in particular, we are um, in the process of planning a wide, uh, um, a wide collection of services. Um, you see some of them here on the right-hand side. So we have started to already do some theme development workshop. These are targeted events, typically one day, uh, addressing a specific industry segment, for example, uh, bringing together uh, 
people from industry with a larger long-term vision to discuss how we, we can work together um, with people from industry. So last time it was 30 people from industry, 30 people from, from research. And we essentially made up, uh, came up with a uh, research agenda, strategic research agenda for that sector. Um, of course, providing general information for industry is, is important. And, and the other big um, part is matchmaking. There's a lot of industry, interest from industry to um, find the right people for their needs. Um, but also uh, in, in the other direction, I think there is a lot of interest from certain researchers to get involved with uh, industry in certain areas or with certain topics, for example. And we want to um, enable this very concretely. Um, so this is just a quick overview. We're finalizing our program. We will start the industry network still this year. Things have been delayed a little bit with COVID, um, but uh, we're, we're driving this forward and will happen uh, pretty soon. If you have more questions, feel free to send this to industry at clareai.org. Um, we actually have hired a full-term person to work on this. He just started this week. So we're, we're getting ready to, to get this off the ground. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited about this. Um, but this might also be things that we want to discuss in, in some more detail. So if you have questions, we have time for this uh, in a second. Thank you very much, Philip. And indeed, this is precisely when we will have question, yes, a time for questions and answers, not only about the Industry Network Initiative, but about anything else uh, that you might have heard uh, within the last uh, 25 minutes um, or that you might have seen in any of our other announcements. Of course, we only presented you with a selection of the things that, that have yeah. been happening over the last little while or indeed ask any other question uh, that, uh, that you're curious uh, to ask. Uh, the entire Clear Core team and uh, a large part of the extended Clear Core team is here um, to answer those questions for you. So uh, please go ahead. Uh, yes, and I will be running this. Um, I already see a, a question uh, in the chat. Um, by the way, there's also a, a way to ask uh, to, to ask questions, a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you're running uh, in Zoom. Um, Holger, we're seeing, yeah. Um, so feel free to use that uh, question and answer button to ask question, but you can also use the chat if that's easier. Um, so there was a, a question by Plamen Angelov uh, about uh, if there is a uh, how to join the activities for ICT 49 proposal. Um, so just to be clear, there is uh, the AI for EU project that's already running for a year and a half or whatever it is. Um, that is building the AI on demand platform. Um, they have a very interesting website with lots of information. So you can join that and there's a, a small community around that. Um, that. That is the original ICT 26 project, I, I believe. Um, then ICT 49, this proposal has already been submitted. So joining the proposal is not possible. Um, but it's mainly about uh, extending the platform with a lot of the tools that we use on a daily basis in the AI community. Um, and so while you cannot join the proposal anymore, um, if it gets, if our proposal, which actually involves all of the ICT48 networks, so Taylor, Vision, uh, AI for Media, and so on, um, there will definitely be possibilities to get involved in that. Um, but the project proposals have been submitted, so, so direct interaction is not possible. Um, there's a question, are there already talks on the Lighthouse Center with the Commission? Is clear involvement um, already sure? Um, I'm, may, maybe I answered that myself, but if anyone else wants to uh, chime in, please do. Um, no, there is no concrete. I mean, we had conversations with the commission about this. This is um, we, we we did this very early on in in in, um, in Claire, uh, actually at uh, the fairly high levels. Uh, so we're in constant uh, discussions with the commission, um, but there is no concrete plan by the commission yet. Um, 
And uh, also there has no, not been a decision um, to build this. This was um, put into the white paper uh, to, get, um, to get feedback on this. Uh, as we discussed earlier, there has been a lot of positive feedback on this. So we expect uh, some actions on this, but this is not clear yet. Uh, I think a lot of the activities by the Commission is currently focused on the PPP. But yes, we will be driving this forward. And if you have input in this, and maybe you might even want to get involved uh, in this, please let us know. Yeah, just, can, just to add can, a little to this. Uh, sorry, Morten, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, um, you can go uh, add to that, and then I'll, I'll address. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah let me add a little there. bit to this. Um, yeah. You know, if you are as enthusiastic about the lighthouse as we are, um, I think what you need to do is go to this PPP questionnaire, although it's somewhat unrelated. And in question seven, which is the general comments box, make it very clear that you want to see that happen, right? If you're even more enthusiastic, write to the European Commission. They're still in the stage of collecting feedback and input on this. This is one of the most ambitious things that the yeah. AI community has ever attempted anywhere in the world, actually, right? Um, things like CERN and ESA and even Airbus don't exist because, you know, some politicians decided they should. That's not the way it worked. They were willed into existence by a dedicated group and coalition of people, right? So we're trying to build that coalition, this group of people. You're all part of it. If you want to see this happen, if you want to have that excitement somewhere in Europe, you need to act. If you are a joint Claire and Elvis supporter, which some of you are, and I see other questions related to that, you need to go and talk to your friends at Ellis who are against this for reasons that are very difficult for us to understand, but that we think are in the way. We think this won't block it, but it's certainly slowing things down. So in our opinion, everything that Alice wants uh, are things that we very much agree with, but we also want this lighthouse. So it would be very nice uh, to create a little bit more momentum outside of the Claire community uh, to get behind this. And from the 64% positive feedback, you can already see that there is basically a two thirds majority in Europe for this lighthouse. And you know, if, if you look at uh, election margins, that's, that's a huge advantage, right? That's a huge lead. Um, so I think we have an excellent shot at this, but it's not in the bag and we need your help to make it happen. More excellent. Uh, Great. Uh, so so uh, I, I wanted to just, uh, uh, just wanted to comment on, there are several questions regarding the relationship between, between Claire and Ellis in, in, the, in the chat. Just want to mention that uh, an example uh, where we are working very, very well together and that is with the uh, PPP, the public-private partnership. Uh, we, we, these days we meet every week uh, on this. So, and it's constructive and useful and we are uh, complementing each other in the work. So, um, so, so, so yes, there are many, many ways Claire and Ellis can work very well together and we are. Which I believe answers the question um, by Javier. Uh, and also maybe from Linda, if, if you want to have more specific information, please uh, ask an additional question. Um, another question by Linda here is, how can we persu uh, persuade the commission to want to fund the Lighthouse Initiative? It's a, uh, is it a national problem? Um, maybe I, I answer, uh, provide a quick answer here. Um, the Commission um, is, of course, making decisions at the European level, and we are very encouraged that they put the Lighthouse in the white paper. So there is momentum at the European level. But in particular, I am pretty much convinced that we need to also um, activate uh, at the national levels. Right? The more we are pushing, the more the national levels, the governments, national governments are arguing towards the commission for such a center, the more likely it will be to actually uh, establish that. Um, and that's something we, we are pushing for. Uh, but of course, that requires a lot more work along um, many directions. Um, any, any other input to that question? 
No, um, I, the, the lighthouse might in the end be a, a col collaboration between the commission and member states, which exactly. makes it more, more exactly. difficult to, 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 to get it to up and running, but uh, that might be the, 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 the road to get there. Yes. Yeah, and, it, and probably European Parliament will have a big role to play in this as well. So yet another thing that you could do if you wanted to support this uh, is actually to write a letter to your MEP, right? If you don't know who your member of European Parliament is, this might be an excellent opportunity to find out because, you know, these people, they work on your behalf. Uh, and I'm sure they would love to hear from you, uh, from AI researchers, from noted <clears throat> AI researchers that have a bold vision. Um, you know, in, in European Parliament, just like anywhere in politics, uh, people can distinguish themselves by pushing uh, bold ideas, um, especially if the bold ideas have broad support. So your MEP might actually be very happy to hear from you and, uh, and to help uh, at that level uh, make this a reality. Yes, and, and Onika just commented here, uh, their MEP, some of the MEPs are already interested and we have heard and have been in interaction with some of them. But of course, um, if you in the wider community talk to your local MEP or your national MEP, uh, uh, it certainly makes a lot of sense and will help us support this. Um, Carmen in the um, question and answers uh, panel here has asked uh, how you can support this. I think we have addressed this. Um, uh, who will govern the lighthouse and who will govern the PPP? All of this has not been decided yet. Um, this is also part of the discussion. This is also part of the ongoing PPP discussion, exactly how that's set up and how the internal structures and voting process and all of that will happen. So this has not been decided, but that is part of the ongoing um, questions. Um, we have another question here from Anna Leida. Can you elaborate on your thoughts on how to structure the matchmaking of services offered? What is the volume and uh, are many needs uh, the same? It is useful to standardize our work more on case-by-case -case basis. Um, we have, uh, maybe I, I just take this here uh, in terms of time as well. Uh, we have engaged with a, a fairly large number of industry partners at Hannover Messe last year and many other events. I think we have a very good understanding of what the needs, uh, the specific needs of the industry are. Uh, that is, we have built our uh, services that are um, in the program right now on that information. Um, what will be a challenge is, uh, so, so they have very concrete questions and they want very concrete answers and uh, the services take effort to actually offer and in, in a successful way. So um, this is not an easy thing. Someone commented that, right, a closer collaboration with the industry will be a difficult thing forward. We're running this and I think we're on, on a good track here. Um, one thing that uh, I think we'll, we'll have to do more work is also getting uh, the interest of the research community um, uh, in, into this. So we currently focus what are the needs of the industry so we can build up that network. But once that network is in place, of course, this is a great opportunity for researchers to get in, involved in, uh, I don't know, in various ways. Um, for specific projects, but also for research questions, um, getting to contact with industry. And I think this is something we need to work on uh, more as we are building that innovation um, network. Uh, another big aspect will be that, of course, there's lots of national activities for bringing AI and academia together. Um, and this is also something we have started to get involved with some of the national players already. But of course, this will happen on a much larger um, uh, scale as we are building um, that, that network. And, and again, this will happen um, already this year. Um, just looking at time slots here, um, many questions, more questions. Let's see how much we can still answer in the given time frame here. From Colin, uh, we have, where can I find the clearest statement of the value of a lighthouse if we stereotype the US and Chinese poles as representing decentralized and private versus centralized and state sponsored, a lighthouse at first glance feels a bit closer to the latter. 
Um, so maybe Philip, I can take yeah, that if you don't mind. Um, you know, I, I think that's basically true, right? Without embracing kind of any Chinese model here, but, but that observation is correct. And the reason why we think this is important to do this way is because, you know, industry is driven by completely different considerations uh, than the rest of society. And of course, industry also works for our benefit, right? So, so I don't want to marginalize that at all. It's extremely important. But you might remember when uh, we were at the threshold of, uh, of uh, sequencing the human genome, um, that was an industry-led effort. And there was a big argument, which back then actually was made first by the United States, interestingly enough, where the company that, that did it uh, was located. Um, and then it was echoed very quickly worldwide that this is so important that the public needs a major stake in it. You cannot leave it to industry alone. Industry will do its thing. And we see this with Google and Facebook and Apple and so on. And they're doing great things, right? They're doing wonderful things. Not everything they do is wonderful, but they're doing fantastic science. They will continue to do so. They need to be connected to us. They benefit from that. They need our talent. Um, they need political support as well. Um, but AI is too important to leave it to industry alone to have the cutting, bleeding edge. And that's why the public has to step in. Now, why does it have to be centralized? There's a very simple reason for that. It's critical mass, right? Um, critical mass of people, of talent, of resources, and also the fact that it should be a symbol, a symbol very much like CERN is one, right? If you want to create something that becomes a global attractor, it's very difficult for that thing to be distributed. Very, very difficult indeed. Symbols are usually not distributed. And that's why Claire from the very beginning pushed for this lighthouse idea. That's why many people are you know, very enthusiastic about that. Um, that's why we get a lot of political uptake uh, on this idea. Now, there are all sorts of practical questions regarding it, you know, where should it be and so on and so forth. And there are clearly, you know, mechanisms that can be used to fairly and equitably answer these questions. But the most important thing to keep in mind is different from what you might sort of have in mind with the Chinese model where the whole thing is state controlled and centralized, right? The lighthouse is only one component in the European AI strategy. There are other components. There is the network, which is you actually a lot more than just you who are here today. Um, and then of course, uh, we believe that the regions play an important role, hence these regional centers. So all of this needs to come together just putting all the resources in one centralized piece of infrastructure would be a big mistake. And that's not what we're advocating. We think that would be, uh, that would be a bad way to go. Um, we need to invest at all three levels. And notice how this actually mirrors sort of European infrastructure of many different kinds. So it's not like this is an outlandish idea for Europe. It's actually a pretty logical idea that fits well within the political framework of the union uh, and its various associates and friends as well. Yes, thanks, Holger. Um, uh, there was a question, how many people are on this uh, call here? It's 133 right now, um, as you can see also in the chat by Holger. There is a question by Risto. Uh, do you have any concerns what your, that your work could increase a rhetoric of an AI race globally? Europe is behind of the US and China, which could potentially have negative effects in terms of AI for social good, as argued by uh, some people. You, you might see this yourself. Um, maybe I take a first step here. So we have always been very inclusive um, and we very clearly argued that we will, of course, work closely with all the other uh, people. Uh, we have very good connections to Japan and Canada and other places. Actually, we, um, well, it's actually through DFKI, we have been uh, part, but Claire plays in a really important role in this. We've just won a tender to support the European Union for collaboration with what they call like-minded countries and actually to build an international alliance um, for trustworthy AI on a much, much larger scale. And this is just one of the many ways we're driving this forward. So um, unless I've misunderstood that question, um, I, I think we're, uh, we're, we're certainly not um, uh, kind of um, helping that race. I mean, that there, there is, of course, a race. Research is always on a competition and industries as, as well. 
Um, but uh, we just want to make sure that uh, Europe is um, is visible as a important partner here, um, but as a partner who is always inclusive, but has very specific interests in particular on the trustworthy side. Um, so let's see, uh, what do we, one of the, from Javier here, one of the main problems of our world is poverty. AI might contribute to reduce differences between rich and poor countries, promote justice, or to aggravate the situation. Has Claire any position about this? Has Claire tried to collaborate with AI associations in LMIC, for example, in Africa and Latin America? Um, Holger, you want to take this? Or, um, I mean, uh, maybe from my side, yeah. there, Oh, well, clearly, we, we, you know, uh, we have established uh, AI for good as one of the tenants yeah. uh, for our work. And, uh, and uh, clearly, the uh, UN's uh, sustainability goals are very important for that. Now, uh, we would love to see that we can spawn activities across, uh, across Europe uh, uh, interest groups uh, in very, uh, to to work on particular areas within within uh, UN's uh, sustainability goals. Uh, there's a lot of work in front of us. I can I, I think that is the better way of, of putting it right now. But we do already, uh, for instance, the work with uh, our COVID uh, team is an example where we are applying our, our expertise across all of Europe to address an issue. And we hope to do it for more, more issues in the future. Exactly, another good example for that sort of thing, although Javier, I think it doesn't go exactly in the, into the direction that you envision, uh, is our uh, joint activity with the European Space Agency. Um, it is very unfortunate, some of you might actually know that in parallel to this event and the Taylor workshop, uh, there is, uh, the conference, the first conference on AI in space in Europe uh, that is being jointly organized by the CLEAR and ESA special uh, interest group uh, on AI. So this is basically our joint activity with the European Space Agency. And as you might know, uh, they're very focused uh, on all sorts of, uh, of, of space exploration related aspects, but also on Earth observation, which plays a really important role uh, in getting traction on issues uh, such as climate change, uh, and, uh, and monitoring the health of, of, of various ecosystems around the planet. Um, and, you know, I was, I was flabbergasted when I was in there earlier before the session, and I saw that, uh, that this meeting had attracted over 100 people. Um, you know, they, they had wonderful speakers from all over the world, from China, from, uh, uh, from the United States, from, uh, you know, people from NASA, uh, and of course, from all over Europe. So, uh, there are activities like that, that that sort of really radiate beyond Europe. However, what Morton says is, is entirely true. Unfortunately, um, our resources are somewhat limited and uh, at this time have to be focused perhaps a little bit more than we would like to on issues such as the PPP, where we don't make the schedule, um, but we basically have to make the best use of the opportunity. However, there are ways of getting involved uh, in CLEAR um, that, uh, that make it possible to, to, you know, start new activities such as connecting uh, better to, um, you know, African and, and Latin American um, efforts uh, and organizations. And I think that would be a very good thing to do. What it needs is, is volunteers, right? Qualified people who help us make it happen. And we are always very open um, for that. In fact, one of the things we are planning to uh, to be a little better about than we have been in the past is to make it clear to everyone in the CLEAR community what the mechanisms are for getting more uh, engaged. And actually, it's pretty simple. You reach out uh, to the CLEAR core team or extended core team or one of, the, um, one of uh, our IAGs and, and just make it known that, that you have a special interest um, that you would like to pursue. And this is what happened in the case of our COVID-19 task force, which has been mentioned is very successful. This is how it worked uh, basically with the European Space, Space Agency. And I think this is how it could work with AI for uh, the less developed parts of the world as well. Yes, thanks, Holger. Uh, we have to come to a close, unfortunately, because of timing issues. I'm just trying to answer some of the questions very, very briefly. Um, Toby, yes, Australia can get uh, involved and can contribute. 
um, please contact us uh, about details. As I mentioned, we uh, have a lot of international contacts. There's members from all over the place already part of Claire, even though we're much more focused on, um, on, on Europe as, as a core, of course, but of course we want to build that international network than we are, uh, have <coughs> built this already. Um, uh, provide the list of Holger's excellent points. Um, not exactly sure what that refers to, but um, uh, I think we'll it's probably that. referring to the lighthouse. So what we could oh, and should okay. do is yes. post the link to the to the uh, lighthouse uh, one or two pager uh, in this chat. Uh, so we we have a little document. Uh, it's not perfect. Okay. It doesn't contain everything, every argument that was made here. Um, but uh, there will be an extended version of that soon. In the meanwhile, there is that, and there is a section in the Clear Vision document which is already on the web page, exactly. uh, also pertaining to that. Uh, do you consider universities, education in general, to engage, encourage? Um, absolutely, yes. If you want to get in, involved, um, uh, please let us know. Um, that That is certainly a big part. We need to activate all of the people who want to do AI research. We need to support them, all the young talent, uh, um, and um, also get the results back to industry. This is all part of the CLEAR vision. Uh, with, uh, yes, and we are working with partner organizations. You've seen some of that in the quick uh, update we gave at the beginning. Um, if you see some partners that, um, additional partners um, that may, would make sense to engage with, let us know. Uh, of course, there is some limits on what we can do with the team that we do have. Uh, but we're, we're very interested to create a, a strong network with all of the partners um, that make sense to collaborate with. So let us know and maybe even get involved. As Holger just said, uh, uh, we're, we're very interested to get more people involved in CLAIR. So uh, if you are interested, let us know. Um, so thank you, Philip, for moderating this. Um, you almost built the perfect bridge to Giuseppe's uh, next point. Um, and without further ado, I, I just want to turn this over to Giuseppe because uh, he has started working on something that I think is, is really outstanding and that I think all of you will like very much. Giuseppe, please. Okay, so I have only one slide. It is this slide. But actually, the most important part of this slide is actually the all uh, at the bottom, which might not work. So I'm going to give you also the long all in the, in the chat. Okay, so uh, we have formed a, a group of people to set up a task force for developing the research pillar. And uh, you can see the list of people on uh, your left. And uh, um, so these are uh, all well-known people. Most of them are uh, AI fellows uh, of very important responsibilities within uh, AORIs and other organizations. So the idea of this group of people is to actually develop the added value, so to develop the added value that Claire can give to the scientific community in the day-to-day -day work. So in particular, oops, okay, in particular we are this group of people will not work specifically on strategic roadmap for CLAIR or for AI in Europe. It will not tackle specific teams like COVID-19 or space. There are other people that are doing that. Instead, really, it wants to develop the added value that having a network like CLAIR can give to the European community to the European uh, scientific community, sorry. <laughs> um, so here I've listed some, uh, uh, some possible uh, uh, added value. And uh, I, am, uh, I will not speak much actually here for hearing uh, your proposal mostly. So let me give you some examples. So first of all, rec recruiting PhD students from all over Europe. So when you have a PhD student, the PhD student normally doesn't really know much about your research, doesn't really know much about the specific scientist. However, it may be aware of Claire and 
Et Claire could actually somehow create a sort of a pool of possibilities for these PhD students. So they can be more uh, easily, uh, can have a, a, an easier access to the various PhD program over here. Then encourage students, I'm thinking PhD students, or even a master student, maybe to spend time in Claire's partner site and possibly to have co-supervision of students uh, through different uh, PhD programs. So uh, then uh, possibly having some sort of clear support to PhD programs. So obviously PhD programs are given by university but maybe Claire can give some sort of label and what it means to have this label that maybe you have the possibility of spending a part of your PhD in another site. Uh, or you can also maybe some course of your PhD could be recorded and given to other site. Um, also, um, let me see where I am. So the other thing is a clear summer school. Now, we do have an AUI summer school, but the AUI summer school is, is a little bit small. I'm thinking about something like ESLI. If you don't know what ESLI is, let me give you a link, because it's a, a very, very interesting kind of school that we have in Europe. We are actually the only one in the world that has this kind of school. So essentially, what happens with this ESLI, oh, I think I copied. What happened with this ESLI is that ESLI uh, gets into a campus and uh, you have uh, like uh, 100 courses, okay, on all possible uh, uh, strange disciplines that you can find in logic, language, and information. Now, think something like this for uh, artificial intelligence would be fantastic. We could do really something incredible there. And we do need uh, some sort of organization that, uh, that, that, that does it, it requires uh, work. Maybe Claire is the right, uh, uh, the right subject to do this. Um, then obviously supports visit of researcher at, all, uh, at any career stage in clear partner sites. And here we have uh, actually a, a very nice mechanism that we set up in Taylor that's called the connectivity pound that really essentially accumulates some pounds that can be used to spend time in, in different sites. And obviously this would give a really fantastic cross-fertilization all over Europe. Then uh, uh, setting up some sort of sponsorship program, clear label sponsorship program uh, for uh, industrial stakeholder. And what I'm thinking, what is the added value for industry? The added value for industry and, and also for, for the scientific community would be uh, that the company can sponsor maybe stages of three or six months in uh, teams uh, uh, related to AI. Or a company, a company could open a collaboration with some clear unit on a specific, uh, uh, on a specific subject and then hosting postdoc researcher for some months in, in the company. The companies could also have hiring campaigns in the various uh, Claire's uh, events or Claire labeled events. Uh, and then obviously set up a scientific collaboration with Claire units. Uh, and I think we can uh, think of many other things. Then set up an explicit collaboration with uh, ICT48 projects. So now we have this uh, network of excellence and uh, this network of excellence have mechanism to generate the networks and have the money to generate the networks. And so understanding really how we can cooperate with this project is actually very important. And then the well, things that you can propose on, on this. The last thing that I need to say is that in order to do these beautiful things, uh, we need to have some resources, some money. And so we need to set up 
a structure uh, in Claire, a way in Claire to get uh, this money. Now, what are we thinking? If you look at the document, you can see I'm not really expanding this very much because this is really at early stage. But if you uh, look at the document, you can see. So maybe we can have some uh, scientific units within Claire that uh, commit to have uh, some resource uh, to be uh, given to Claire. Now notice, what are these units? These units are universities, no? So La Sapienza will never give money to Leiden or anyone else, right? So this money would be virtual, but that's fine. So it's not important uh, that the money are given to uh, an organism. The important thing is that the money can be used to do these kind of things. And these kind of things we are mentioning here are really much in line with what you can do with uh, a research project. Uh, and so it, it, is, it shouldn't be a problem to actually use this money uh, for doing activities like this. So now I invite you to have a, a look at this document, to comment on it. You should be able to comment on it. Uh, and to ask questions and propose things also. Uh, thank so. you very much, Giuseppe. Um, I think we should take a few minutes um, for direct questions that Giuseppe can then perhaps answer. Yeah. Uh, so please, if you have uh, questions, put them into the Q and A. Why not enlarge Esli uh, into this rather than the start anew? Is a question from Toby. I mean, uh, yes, we could do for sure that. But uh, notice that Esli is not really something in AI. It's really in, a, it's a mixture of uh, logic, linguistics, uh, and the science of information. So for sure, we, have, we want to have cooperation with ESLI, for sure, for sure. Because there, there is a component of knowledge representation in ESLI, for example, that being always present. So, um, I mean, coordination for sure, it, it would be very good. I don't see any other question, uh, Magdalena but Magdalena uh, wants to help with the school. Excellent. <laughs> Magdalena, you Magdalena opted? <laughs> so let's take a note of this. This is great. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, everyone who wants to get involved, please let us know, uh, or, or Giacomo in this case, um, or anyone else in the Claire team. Good. So if there are no other burning questions, um, let us thank Giuseppe again uh, for spearheading this effort. Um, this is the kind of volunteer contribution that's always most welcome. And, you know, Giuseppe sets a great example because uh, he is a busy man. Um, he has just been the program chair of, uh, of ECHI, right? And, and we know what that involved um, because this was a huge conference, not easy to organize because of the circumstances. So we all owe him a big debt of gratitude for that. Um, but in parallel to this, he also put cycles into this initiative, which I find uh, extremely impressive. So thank you once again, uh, Giuseppe, for all the work that, that you are doing here uh, within Claire and beyond for the community. This is absolutely wonderful. So now perhaps we can move into our last agenda item. Um, and uh, this is something I've been looking forward to. We, we have to see how it works. Um, Morten, um, you're leading this, uh, please take it away. Thank you. Um, you should run the slides from your place. Yes, thank you. Um, well, uh, the vision, the vision of, uh, uh, well, let me just start with saying that we, 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 what we are going to do now is we are going to talk about and get ideas and suggestions and proposals, anything to help us with how, finding out how we should realize the vision, clear vision. Uh, Holgi, let's take a look at the next slide uh, before this one. Just uh, these are, as you remember, the vision for Claire: three objectives, excellence in all areas of AI across all of Europe with a human-centered focus, two principles uh, or focus areas, AI for good, AI for all, and three instruments we're looking at, network of centers across Europe, regional centers, possibly somewhat specialized on broad application domains and a central European lighthouse or hub. So what we would like to do now is to, let's go back to the previous slide, uh, Holger. 
Uh, we have a, 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 a panel and we're going to discuss this, but we're going to ask, before I introduce the panel, I would like you to take a look at uh, the link that we will post in the chat at any moment now. That will it's take you to a Google Doc. Already yeah, excellent, excellent. That will take you to a Google Doc. And in that Google Doc, you can start with um, putting in your thoughts. There are some questions there, and it's a it's space for you to write whatever you would like to write there. And you can also add your own questions to that Google Doc. And we will try to look at it and, and use this as we're moving forward, but we can also pick up some of the things that come up there and in the chat during our discussion. Now, back to the panel. So while you are doing this, back to the panel. I'm happy to have Frederick uh, Heinz, Mark Schonauer, uh, Jan Bormans, who's the CEO of the European Startup Network, uh, Josef Urban, Holger Haas, and Philip Susalek here uh, to discuss um, some of the things that we've been thinking about and some of the issues that we have asked as questions or any other questions they may, might have. So I thought I should just start with throwing the ball uh, to, or a talking stick if you want to Frederick. Uh, and uh, Frederick, uh, when you, when I, we asked you to reflect on this, uh, what did you think about? Oh, thank you very much. No, so I mean, Actually, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a parallel meeting right now with an, a Swedish organization called AI Innovation of Sweden, which is really trying to kind of accelerate the use of AI in, in Sweden. And uh, one thing uh, that I think is very important is how can we tap in and uh, uh, connect to kind of national initiatives that are covering some of these aspects so that we don't have to redo the things, uh, uh, but rather can... Um, uh, yeah, hook up, connect to uh, existing work and thereby both helping them, of course, but also furthering uh, the visions that we have. So that, I think, is a strategically very uh, important uh, question. Um, yeah. And also uh, fostering the collaboration across national boundaries, get the uh, right best practice in one area to, to other areas. I think there's a lot we can do in that direction. Clearly, national initiatives are the, 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 the backbone uh, of AI in Europe. And uh, the, the, you, the initiatives, including CLEAR, that goes across, can help creating more bang for a box for national initiatives, but also the other way around. So I do agree with that. Uh, would like to see uh, whatever you, all of you are uh, putting in, We'd like to see your reflections on that how, because this is a question. How can we tap in to national so, initiatives? So I can give one point because I mean, the way we, I've been kind of introducing Claire to them uh, is because they are of course very much interested in internationalization. Yeah. So uh, in that organization, it's mainly Swedish uh, companies, universities, organizations and so on that are part of it. But of course they want to, have uh, international collaboration and international um, connections. And there, I think, is one concrete example uh, of this. Uh, I also think when it comes to um, uh, kind of industry connections, because I mean, companies are usually rarely only national, but usually international. And uh, if you can then uh, offer companies, not only in, in this case, connections to Swedish, AI research and innovation, but also European research and innovation, you can make a stronger offer to companies and other organizations to become partners. Excellent. Well, uh, Mark, uh, when, uh, when you reflected on, on this, and we, of course, we are discussing on this, these issues all the time, but sometimes we need to bring, we need to go to the core questions again. It's like axioms. We need to get back down to that. Mark, when, uh, when we asked you, when I asked you, what, what, what would be the question or issue that you would like to, to put forward? Uh, okay, hi. Uh, it, it's one of the questions in the, in the Word document about, and it was already discussed here, but I'd like maybe to add a, a little bit more about the smoothing the relationship between uh, research and the industry. 
uh, as you know, uh, Martin has been deeply involved in this AI PPP uh, thing. I'm trying to help as much as I could. Uh, so the first thing I want to repeat something I said in the Taylor uh, opening workshop. Uh, we need to make, I mean, we researchers also need to get involved in the industry-driven uh, initiatives. And of course, the PPP is at the moment the, the, the most prominent one. Uh, and it will only, be, I mean, we can only have, a, let's say, balanced relationship with industry if we also show we want to participate there and put some uh, cycles there. So that's important uh, that all researchers uh, get involved in the whatever will be the, the association driving this uh, forthcoming PVP. Uh, another thing about this is uh, we've seen uh, uh, in the previous uh, previous discussion about uh, research that we want to encourage, uh, let's say, researchers to go from one institution to the other across borders. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I think probably we should also encourage let's say engineers from industry to, to join uh, for some time uh, research institution. Uh, not, not all industry have, uh, let's say, the, 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 the critical mass to do some development or R&D in AI. And many of them would probably benefit from sending one or two engineers during a limited period of time inside a research uh, lab because that's only there that you really can get impregnated with, with uh, AI uh, research. So that would be my, uh, let's say, addition to, <laughs> to what's been presented there, also toward industry. Uh, that's excellent, Mark. It's a very important point. And I think that gives us a segue to, to Jan. Jan, you are yes. the CEO, CEO of the European Startup Network. Uh, and uh, we have discussed a bit the difference between the focus on industry and the focus on innovation and entrepreneurship in startups and scale-ups. Yes. So indeed, I think it's, um, it's the first point to recognize that uh, startups and especially scale-ups uh, are a very good way to bring uh, innovation to the market. Um, they are not going to replace uh, corporates, but they are certainly very complementary as a very efficient instrument to bring innovation to the market. Um, so maybe I can comment on, on what I heard. Um, so when I heard about uh, the goals of Claire, um, having centers of excellence and, and regional centers, um, this sounded very interesting, but also familiar because if you think about startups, startups that grow, startups that have uh, impact, they don't do that in isolation. Uh, they do this because they have an ecosystem uh, that is built around them, uh, that is supporting their growth. And in this ecosystem, of course, you have capital, you have VCs, etc. You have talent, uh, very important, and you have IDs. You have corporates as well, because again, these are not competitors, these are maybe more partners. So the fact that for startups, it's very important to be in a successful ecosystem and that with Claire, you are also going to make this uh, European um, startup um, AI ecosystem. I see an opportunity and a possible threat depending on how we tackle it. Uh, so the, the threat would be that these two things are decoupled, yeah? that you have startups in one world and Claire in another world. Um, because it's about people, people that have to meet each other, that have to understand each other's world. Uh, but so the opportunity is, of course, that we should uh, make sure that there is a good connection. So depending on how it goes, is a threat or an opportunity. So these were my uh, initial thoughts. Uh, thank you, Jan. I think it's very interesting that, that AI particularly, uh, and a lot of the research that, uh, that people online now listening to us, a lot of the research they're doing is disruptive to existing industries, which means that existing industries might be less interested in, in, in collaborating on these things. Uh, so uh, I think uh, the nature of AI makes it very important that we, we expand our view from just being industry oriented just to the, the broader ecosystem. Josef, uh, over to you. Uh, your reflections on uh, which question would you be, think would be the one you would select uh, if you if you should select one. Oh, thanks, Holger. I I would like to 
say something which probably continues what Frederick suggested, the, the interplay between the, the national and the, let's say, European level. So it, it seems to me that um, there are untapped opportunities uh, for, um, like, let's say, take a country like Czech Republic, where um, we, we need to explain to, to, to the government uh, the importance of AI, the importance of putting funding, the importance of, uh, like Jan was saying, the collaboration with the um, startups. And uh, it, it seems to me that um, one thing where Claire could be very useful is basically to reverse the direction, like we had sort of forced or talked our governments into supporting Claire, but now we could use Claire to to sort of strengthen the the communities in each of these countries uh, by providing some sort of certification, some sort of value, some uh, some sort of guarantee that uh, the the AI plans that we are proposing locally to to the national governments. Uh, are sort of state of the art, are the like world leading quality basically. Mm. So, so, so one one thing, and you know, I have sort of lobbied uh, you as the core team already, like in the beginning of this year before the COVID um, crisis started, to to do something like this in support of the Czech Republic efforts. But I think what we could have. And I think somebody was even asking for that in in the questions, like for some points, how to how to lobby the the, the governments. We we could have some templates uh, for uh, Claire to to basically help uh, the particular communities in each country to to lobby for AI centers for Claire centers of excellence for uh, combinations with uh, startups. And the Claire community would be the community of experts that uh, provide the um, evaluation, that provide the guidance, that provide the uh, selection of programs and people, etc. Yes. Uh, so, so that that would be one thing I, I think where we we could do something relatively easily, and it might have a lot of impact. Well, thank you, Josef. Uh, since we are in Coming towards the end, uh, Holger and Philip, um, ha you, have you been on the Google Doc and seen some of the questions there? Is there some something there you would like to pick up? Yeah, I've been there just a moment ago. Um, I think some people didn't realize that you can go way down, and there's all sorts of interesting things. Um, and you right, can so, so one to, in section can... four that I see right now is. Hang on. Uh, yeah, one that I see right now in section four is how do the small players also get a chance to utilize these resources, since it's unlikely that they can make a case in a competitive setting against the big players, right? Um, and so, uh, just to be very clear, so the resources that, that we currently have, right, um, uh, in terms of the offices, uh, they're really not focused on, on big players at all. They're focused on community and we extend to continue building them that way, right? So for instance, the industry network, which is supported out of the Saarbrücken office, um, I think is uh, there is a great dedication to not limit this to, you know, big weighty companies, quite on the contrary. That's one of the reasons why we have Jan here today, because we recognize the importance of smaller companies and not just startups and, and scale-ups as well, uh, and the opportunity that that has. Um, in terms of researchers that, that haven't been involved in, uh, in our proposal so far, um, we have started basically a clear support program for um, funding proposals that were not directly involved. Um, and what that means is if you're working on a, on a European proposal in particular, that you think um, if granted furthers uh, the, uh, the goals of CLEAR and benefits the CLEAR community beyond those involved in the proposal, do let us know. We might be able to provide um, a letter of support and we have done so in quite a few cases. Now, of course, if it's you know, various CLEAR members that are in competition with each other, uh, our letters of support will be 
uh, you, you know, not auctioned off or anything like that, but, but they will reflect that mm -hmm. in a reasonable way, right? So we don't sort of prioritize one over the other, but we do, we are happy to express our support for uh, any proposals that you're working on um, that, uh, that might further our mission and vision and benefit the CLEAR community as a whole. And there have been quite a few in the past that have been brought to our attention and have received letters. So these are two mechanisms that I wanted to highlight. So since we have very little time left, uh, Philip, uh, if you have 30 seconds now, how would you use it? Well, I've talked about the industry network, and I think this will be in a very important part. Um, but uh, maybe I use the last few seconds to highlight again that we see and we've always seen Claire as an inclusive and um, AI for all, right, very inclusive um, organization where we want to create as much synergy between activities uh, while maintaining the identities of individual sub-communities. And um, I'm very happy to see um, the closer link with your AI now also through the board. That's exciting. Uh, I, I see that also while there has been some issues with, with Ellis, there, there is more and more collaboration uh, with Ellis as well. Um, and at the end, it's really that we as a community right, need to think less in terms of the sub-communities and their special interests. Of course, they are important, uh, but think also more about how can we actually work together. This is all what Claire is about. This is what we started up two years, with, with two, two years ago. Um, and uh, I, one of the things that are really, the key I'm element of that is get involved uh, and uh, help us realize that vision. And uh, Please just contact us if you want to. And Thank you, Philip. More than 30 seconds. We, we, we uh, come to an end. I'll give the 10 seconds to, to Holger to wrap this up. And thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take uh, more than 10 seconds, but thank you, Morten. Um, so first of all, thank you to uh, the many people who have been here today. So uh, we're, we're indeed at the end and we're still over uh, 100, which is, which is really great. Uh, so it seems that what we're doing is as exciting as AI in space and maybe even more exciting. Well, AI in space is part of what we're doing, right? So that's, that's cool. Apologies again to anyone who wanted to attend both events. You can now go, go, you can now go back to AI in space um, or in Taylor, which has uh, generously provided a break for its attendees to be here. Uh, so thanks again for that, Frederick. Thanks to everybody who contributed um, to today's event. Uh, through their comments in the Google Doc, which, by the way, we will leave open. So um, if you want, uh, for the rest of the day uh, and also for the weekend, you can leave your comments and ideas there. Uh, and after that, uh, there are other ways to reach us, which you all know about, Zulip, for example. Uh, so, so please share with us any ideas that you have uh, how to realize our vision more effectively. Um, the final thing I wanted to say is that, you know, this is all about critical mass. It's very easy to sort of fall back into the thinking that, you know, the resources that this person over there has or that group or that country are resources that I can't have. And that's a mistake. I think what we've learned over the last few uh, not so pleasant and partially tragic months, however, is that the European model actually works really well, right? Yeah compared to what happened in other places in the world, what's still happening in other places in the world, which is quite sad. And you see how, you know, a determined collection of diverse societies standing together can do amazing things. And I think that the COVID recovery funds uh, will enable more of this. I do think it is such with AI in Europe and beyond, right? If we all stand together, the pie is so much bigger than it is when we work against each other. And therefore, I think we should continue to actually assemble our critical mass all the way until it ignites and doesn't create a big explosion, but starts producing tons of energy that we can inject into the system, into society. Um, and to just wrap this up, I want to end actually with something that Paul Lukovic said uh, in the panel yesterday, which uh, I think rings very, very true. Uh, Paul is the coordinator of the um, Humane AI Network, uh, which of course very closely uh, works with, with CLEAR and has many CLEAR members in it. And Paul said, you know, when we think about AI, a mistake that we easily make is that, that we are afraid and that we, you know, look at competition and that we have all these negative things that propel us to, to do certain things. 
that's not the way to look at it. We should look at the opportunity. And the opportunity before us in Europe with AI is immense. And I would say that as a result of the COVID crisis, the opportunity is even bigger, right? We should make use of that. We should make use of that by, uh, in our daily work, realizing that together, uh, leveraging the diversity and the critical mass that we can assemble, uh, we can be much, much stronger than any smaller collection of people. So it's not divide and conquer, it's, it's assemble the critical mass uh, and do amazing things. Um, and this is what we're all committed to doing. Um, thank you everyone who was part of this journey. Uh, we'll keep you updated, of course, there will be other opportunities and I hope that one of these uh, opportunities in the, in the not so far future will bring us physically together again so that we can see each other's faces that we know is in the room that we can create the kind of energy we had at uh, previous live events. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this today and I hope to see you all again very soon. Thank you very much.